Hey everybody, it's Coin Snobs. I'm Keith. And I'm Jason. And I picked up at my bank some customer wrapped rolls. So we got three rolls of nickels and 20 rolls of pennies. So we're going to go through them, see if we can find some good stuff. Yeah, we'll probably find something in there. You never know. That's the funny thing about customer rolls, as I've kind of talked about before. It's either going to be a whole bunch of cool stuff or a whole bunch of nothing. But anyways, come back to you guys with the wrap up. See you soon. Hey guys, and welcome back. Let's take a look at what we found in those customer rolls. First thing we got here is a 79 plane. Pretty average looking circulated coin. But we decided to keep it because it does have a little bit of struck through there on the top part. Missing most of the D, most of the A, and the T. Quite a bit of stuff actually missing there in the United States of America. So obviously a coin that we would never keep or we would hoard for the copper content. We will keep it. Okay. Then we have a wheat penny, 1953D. No errors found on this one, but it's a weedy. And then another weedy. We actually found two wheat cents in those rolls, which isn't too bad. I mean, we didn't have a lot of a lot of them, but we found two. 1920, which is awesome. Anytime you can find a wheat penny in the 30s, 20s, or especially the teens, you're you're scoring pretty decent. I mean, this thing is almost this this will be a hundred years old in a couple months, so to find that in circulation, that's super awesome. And it looks exactly like you would expect it to look. Actually, uh, not necessarily. It's it's in pretty decent shape for a coin that's almost 100 years old. I mean, you can still see some of the lines there in the wheat stock. And it's still pretty well defined. I mean, we've found some, some coins newer than this that are nearly circulated smooth. So, actually, it's not a bad coin. And, I mean, again, it's a 1920, so why not? And then we found a 1964 with lots and lots of that beautiful red copper color. Very common coin, but I mean, you know, found it in circulation and it's red. So we're going to save this guy. A few spots here and there. Overall, it's a really nice coin. Awesome. All right, and then we've got ourselves a 1984D Nothing super fancy about this one either. Uh, this was shortly after the transition year when they started doing the uh, copper cladded zinc coins in 1982. And they really, really had a lot of issues with getting the process right for making the planchets. So as you can see, there is a whole bunch of dimples there. I mean, it looks, it almost looks like the, the surface of the moon or an orange or something like that. I mean, it's crazy. It's all dimpled. And this occurred, you can actually still see this once in a while in even a 2019 scent where there's an issue with uh, the zinc reacting with the copper cladding. But naturally, the early transition years, or shortly after the, uh, the transition years, it was really bad. But we kept this guy because right here, around the mint mark, <clears throat> you can actually see some lamination. 
And if you look right here, you can actually see where the D is super separated there. There's a little bit of separation here. And again, lamination is basically where uh, layers of the clad planchet are starting to peel off. They're actually separating. Uh, it can be caused by uh, gas bubbles, like, you know, most of the things that you see here on this surface that make it so dimply. Those, a lot of those are gas bubbles from the zinc reacting to the copper. But this is where actual layers are starting to peel up. Same thing over here by Liberty. This is actually, at first glance, it looks like damage, but it's actually layers of the planchet peeling away. And what I'll do is at the very end of this video, I will get a super close-up look at that so you guys can kind of see how it's peeling apart. Yep, just looks like a whole bunch of craters or dimples. Alright. And then, we found ourselves in 1960, Denver, large date. Still has a little bit of that red mint luster. But, it also has lamination. And it has quite a bit of lamination. All through the shoulder area here, going all the way up. This is lamination. This is actually places where, like if you look right here, you can kind of see a flake of metal where it's laminating, where it's peeling up from the other layer. You can actually see where like right around here and here and a little bit right here where it's actually peeled up and separated. It's come off of the coin, so that's why you have this nice red copper color exposed underneath it. But that's, again, that's where layers of the planchet are separating from each other. A little bit up here, too, between the N and the G, and in God we trust. And I'll do a close-up of that one, too, at the end of the video. Just so you guys can kind of see exactly what you're looking for. Uh, sometimes people confuse lamination and uh, it being through, uh, struck through debris or struck through grease. Lamination is easiest, uh, easy, most easily identified by the fact that there will be some pretty jagged lines on it where it's separating or peeling, like right here. You can see a fairly jagged line right there. That's exactly what that is. That's the edge of a, a clad layer. All right. Then we will go on to the nickels. 1958, not a great condition coin obviously, but it's a 1958, and we keep anything 1959 and back as far as nickels, even if they're circulated, I mean that's just, it's one of the things that we do, I mean again the best part about coin collecting is you collect coins how you want to collect them. It's got some of those swirly wheel marks right there where it got stuck in a vending machine. You know, it could have got stuck in a vending machine last week or all the way back in 1958. They get stuck like that and they spin and that's what causes that circle right there in the middle of the coin as opposed to on the outer side where it might have got hit by the, uh, the roll crimper. That's definitely damage from being stuck in some sort of a vending machine. Usually it's on the reverse too, but not always. No, nope, that one's not too bad. Maybe a little bit right there. But I think this this is crimper damage right here. Okay, and it's a Denver. A little bit of a crooked mint mark. And it has a die crack right here. Coming off of Monticello going towards the rim. Definitely an older die state. You can see what almost looks like double dies right here. But that is not. That's just metal flow from the edge of a worn die. Okay. And then we've got a 1957. Again, keeping it because it's an older nickel. No wheel marks in the center of this one. That one's a Denver. Da 
Let's have a little bit of damage up there on top of the rim, above the E and the P, and the Pluribus Unum. But, that'll go into a tube, and it'll have a forever home. It's never going back into circulation. And then, and then, this happened. Of those few rolls of nickels that we had, I think we had three rolls of nickels, we found a buffalo. A 1927 buffalo. Circulated as you would expect to find. A little bit of damage there on the right, uh, on the right side on the rim from it being dropped or being hit against something. And it's a plain Philadelphia strike. It's not any kind of like a key date or semi key date. It's certainly not any kind of high mint state or any kind of decent grade at all. But we found this in a roll. This cost us five cents. It is a buffalo nickel for five cents. We're not going to be paying off any cars or going out and putting a pool in the backyard or anything with this with this uh, nickel, but I mean, it's a buffalo. Can't be mad about that. Alright, next I'm going to show you guys that uh, lamination up close. Alright guys, up close and personal with a 1984 Denver Lincoln scent with lamination error. And you can even see, if you look at the D mint mark right here, you can even see where there's Almost like a little ledge right here, like a three-dimensional look to it. That's right there where that clad layer is separating. All the way through here. And there's actually a little bit of airspace somewhere underneath here where it's separated. Again, that's the difference between a struck through where it's literally just missing detail. Or you can see where it looks kind of modeled where it's, it's literally it wasn't struck to begin with. This is just peeling, peeling layers of the planchet. I think we said there was some over here at Liberty too, right? Uh, that that doesn't look like lamination anymore. See, when you get up close to it, it looks like it might be just damage. Maybe a little bit right here, where it looks like there might be some separation, or maybe it was trying to separate, but it could still be lamination. But I'm going to go ahead and mostly concentrate on that, because that's, that's definitely lamination. All right, and then let's go to the cool one. 1960 Denver, a little bit of mint luster still on it. Okay, and lots and lots of lamination. See, that's a great example right there. I can pretty much tell you what happened right here. This is a spot where this began to peel and separate from the other layer, and this is actually a fold over. This is where this was separated, pulled up from here, and folded over like a blanket. This is actually supposed to be over here. It looks like probably part of this is either missing or the same thing. And then here's another great example of a fold over in lamination right here. Definitely a lamination error. If you look right here, same idea. It's folded over like a blanket. It was separated from this area right here. Okay, something pulled it up. You can even kind of see right here where something grabbed it and pulled it up and folded it over. So this is all lamination. You can see a line all the way around here, all the way around here and here, up through here. All of that is lamination, places where it's separating. Looks like there's still some up here. It's like lamination right here, and then I think there's some, oh yeah, there's still plenty to go. Same idea here, this is the same thing, see this is a fold over. It was actually snagged by something, it used to be over here, and then it was folded over like a blanket. And this is some intact lamination where it's peeling up, but it hasn't been folded over yet. It goes all the way through the coin. All the way through the rim. Up here, all of this is still intact. 
So, yeah, guys, that's a lamination error. Anyways, that's the cool stuff that we have for you today. Going to um, expect a video to be coming out again Wednesday. And in between then and now, don't forget to make sure to go to the 300 uh, subscriber giveaway video. Check that sucker out. Um, hit the like button. Make sure you do a comment. Let us know, you know, where you first found out about the channel. And then the giveaway for that, I'm going to be pulling on Thursday, uh, October 24th. So uh, at noon, uh, at uh, 12 o'clock noon, Mountain Standard Time. So just make sure you get your comment in before then. And uh, until next time, guys, love you all. God bless, and we will see you soon. Thanks for checking it out.